Hello, and welcome to another episode of Crossing Bridges Talk Show. I'm your host, Larry Montgomery Sr. This is my co-host, Will. Will, introduce yourself. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm William Montgomery, and it's a pleasure to be here. Yet another day in the land of Georgia. (laughs) An amazing place. The weather was really nice today, I have to say that. Coming from New York, it was really nice today. Late October, no, not late, mid-October. It's like an Indian summer down here right now. Mm. Anyway, this week our conversation is going to focus in on what kind of a dad are you? Or what kind of a dad are you dealing with? Or what kind of a dad are you looking for? (laughs) Any way you want to spin it. Um, We have a clip here. We're going to run it. Uh, One second here. Let me put it in the uh, queue. And here we go. Another day, another story. The five types of dads. One of the most amazing things I ever discovered after I started coaching, mentoring, and counseling men was that almost every emotional problem a man has can be traced back to an emotional wound caused by his father. I think John Eldridge said it best in his best-selling book Wild at Heart, every boy in his journey to become a man, takes an arrow to the center of his heart and the place of his strength. Because the wound is rarely discussed, and even more rarely healed, the wound remains. And the wound is almost always given by his father. When we look back on childhood, there are a lot of things we wish our dads would have done or didn't do. But the key is not to allow our past to negatively affect how we raise and relate to our own children. Regardless of the kind of father you may have had, there are typically five types of dads we can choose to become. POW Dad This is the prisoner of war dad. This dad is present in his children's life but he's not positively engaged in it. And he's not just disengaged, he's enraged. To his children, he always seems angry, and because of that anger, he hurts others with his words, tone, and actions. The family walks on proverbial eggshells around him because they don't know when or if the angry guy inside him will rear his ugly head. MIA Dad This is the missing in action dad. This dad chooses not to be present in his children's lives. He may have helped bring them into the world, but he doesn't want to have anything to do with them. He's not engaged and his children may not even know who or where he is. They probably wouldn't recognize him if they saw him on the street. He chooses to stay away because the pain and shame of returning are too great for him to face. AWOL Dad This is the absent without leave dad. Yes, he's physically present in the home, but he's not emotionally present when he's there. The children see him, but the children can't seem to talk to him. He comes home and secludes himself from the family. He may not necessarily be a bad dad. He's just emotionally detached from others in his home. So he struggles in silence as those he loves suffer and struggle in his absence. Reserve duty dad. Reserve duty dad is the dad who treats fatherhood like a part-time job. He's engaged with his children, but only occasionally, maybe only on the weekends, when it's most convenient for him. He has good intentions, but his children require more time than he's willing or able to give. His children need him to be a full-time dad, but he's content with giving them a part-time effort. Active Duty Dad, aka an all-pro dad. Active Duty Dad isn't a perfect dad, but he's a consistently and emotionally present dad. He's actively engaged, attentive, available, and accessible to his children. He's intentional about learning and winning the hearts of his children, even if he has to struggle to do it. He loves, protects, serves, and provides for their physical, emotional, and spiritual needs. He's not afraid to affirm his love for his children, and when they're in his presence, they feel emotionally and physically safe and secure. The types of dads we become are often influenced by the types of dads we had growing up. But regardless of the types of dads we had growing up, whether good, bad, average, or absent, our dads may explain us as men. But they won't excuse us as fathers. Our children deserve for us to be the best versions of ourselves and to serve as a blueprint of what a real dad should be. Okay. That's it for that. Another day, Jimmy. another story. Oh. The five types of dads. Hold on a second. One of the most amazing things I ever... Let's run it again. Anyway, we're all here now. Can we say hello? Hi, everybody. Go ahead. 
She's got that Latin and that's why she can't get here on time. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but at least she can laugh about it. <laughs> so we were talking about, we're going to talk about the five different kinds of dads that you, we would hope that fathers consider becoming or avoiding becoming. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, um, yeah, the clip talks about, well, life may have been a certain way for you as a father, and that's what you learn, the baggage that you carry with you. But that doesn't mean that that's a permanent thing. You know, you may have to work on that to be, you know, a better father. You know, mm -hmm. those parts that are missing, that were missing in your, in your own household, um, now that you have your own household, um, you need to work on trying to fix and to make sure that they don't, you know, happen in, in your children's life. Um, you know, I know Will, you know, I'm his father, so I, I was with him most of the time. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Thank and, God. That's good. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, he, he turned out pretty good, pretty good guy, you know, and uh, but there's still no guarantee that your children are going to be, you know, good citizens you know but the thing is is that they, they got they are who they are mm -hmm. but then if you didn't do your part of the job you know they got an excuse you know it may not be a, you know a real excuse but it's the one that they use to to get by in society when they do something wrong or they do something that's unacceptable um mm -hmm. and you you want to raise them to uh, to at least have seen and heard the right thing to do. You know, me and Will had a conversation before this. I'm not going to get details because, you know, it's private. But, <laughs> you know, the situation that, that came up and happened, it was uh, definitely a disappointment to both of us to hear about it mm -hmm. and surely a disappointment for him to experience it. But then now as it starts to play out, you know, he's feeling some kind of way about it. And, and, you know, my point to him was like, you know, two wrongs don't make a right. You know, uh, I certainly can appreciate how he feels about the topic. But the reality is, is that that don't mean it's, you know, if you respond the same way that person responded to you, and you're just as guilty of being a wrong person. Mm. Uh -oh. um, <clears throat> yeah. Well, it froze at the moment. So, uh, but yeah, we had a conversation earlier today about a situation and, uh, you know, dad's belief is his belief. And, you know, it's, uh, it's not that it's wrong. What my thoughts were, uh, it's just that, uh, somebody of a different background would probably choose the high road. Oh, you had froze for a minute there, so I stepped in, Dad. Mm -hmm. Go on. Oh, you know, well, you know, somebody else may choose the high road. I, mm -hmm. you know, I'm kind of the person like eye for an eye, but you know, hey, <laughs> each is his own, you know. And uh, you know, I told my dad, I said, well, you know, I, I understand you might want me to do something different, but I just had to beg for forgiveness. Uh, <laughs> mm. <laughs> that ain't that's no excuse. But anyway. I, I know how you, I understand how you feel. I, I do understand how you feel, you know, and, and uh, probably if you weren't my son and I was talking to you, I'd probably be jump on that bandwagon too, because I really didn't care much about you, but <laughs> I do care about you. you know, I want you to do the right thing. Um, and in the end, it'll work out. However, however God works it out, it'll work out. But uh, when you, when you do people wrong, it's going to come back to you. Mm -hmm. It's going to catch up with you sooner or later. And trust me, it ain't going to be nothing like you thought it was going to be. You're going to pay the price for what you did, you know, and that's a good thing because, you know, it's your father's responsibility to help you to understand that there are consequences when you do things, you know, you mm -hmm. do the right thing, you know, hopefully the, a good thing will happen for you. No, a good thing will happen for you. It just may not happen as quickly as a bad thing might happen, you know. <laughs> you know yeah. But anyway, 
Uh, Kimmy, did you want to throw something on the table before you pop out? Um, no, I, like I said, and I, uh, from the beginning and I'll continue to say is I'm glad that y'all are doing this. It's important. Um, and you know, people need to hear about it, need to see it. And, um, I think the whole dynamics of even this show with father and son is just a great example of, you know, what a lot of the men need to see. So, you know, that's all I have to say is it's a good thing. It's good stuff for sure. Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. You know, we're going to have to have a day when we have uh, the young kids on the, on the show to, talk about what life is like and from their perspective. I mean, things have changed a lot since I was a child. You know, I saw a, a post on uh, Facebook, was Facebook, um, a little boy sitting at the breakfast table, eating cereal and looking at the cereal box. It mm -hmm. says, that's the era that I came up in. There was no, <laughs> was no TV in the kitchen. Right. <laughs> the TV was in the living room for company. Yep. <laughs> yep. Right. You want to watch TV, but sneak in there on Saturday morning and get your little TV shows on and then get outside and do something, you know. But uh, today it's, 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 it's different. Uh, I don't mean it's better. It's just different, you know. So, yeah, one day we should have uh, the kids on and hear what they have to say. But anyway, uh, we got a second video here. And the second video, again, is short. And it focuses on... Um, well, let me introduce it and then we'll finish talking about the first one. It focuses on what you need to do as a father to be memorable. You know, you know, a lot of things you, you try to do the right thing. And that doesn't mean that people are paying attention to you or people are even interested in what you did, you know? So you, you leave this place and you say, well, I did a good job. I did the best I could, but then did you do those little things that assured that people would realize that, yeah, this was, he was a good guy, you know, he, he tried hard or whatever like that. So we'll show that in a minute, but I want to address some of the things in the one that we just saw. We talk about the uh, uh, POW, uh, prisoner of war dad, you know, uh, that's, that's the guy who um, I got trapped as as in, to, in the fatherhood, you know, now he was out there at the club. It was all good, you know. And then that uh, what they call that the, the Hennessy kicked in, and you found yourself. You tripped and you fell on on that woman, and now you got a baby. <laughs> you know? so that was a hard thing, fall. Yeah, <laughs> watch out for that that, that Hennessy because. Uh, <laughs> It'll trip you up. <laughs> and so now you got to, and now you're mad because uh, you, you you didn't want that to happen because of the responsibility. But the thing is, you had a responsibility as the man to protect yourself. And if you didn't want to protect yourself, protect her. You know, because she don't know you like you know you. You know you didn't want any kids, mm -hmm. and she wanted kids. So now what? <laughs> you just fell into it. And now you're mad. And so the kids got to suffer. You know, and they talked about the uh, MIA uh, dad missing in action. You know, you're physically there, but uh, you're not engaged. You know, that's that's like punishment. Mm -hmm. You know, you put the food on the table and nobody can eat. Well, what's that about? That's just torture. You know, you don't want to be there. You know, so, well, I got an excuse. I, this excuse, my back hurt, you know, a job is hard, you know, it's cold outside. That's life. What you gonna do? Yeah. Quit. <laughs> you know, you ain't quitting. So now what? Why you want to punish everybody else that's involved in your life that you've, you know, you caused this? You know? And, you know, I understand how you, you, you know, guys may have a, feel a certain way, but that's just a feeling, man. It'll pass. Yeah. Reality is, is what are you going to do in the meantime? You know, you do the right thing. You know, your kids grow up. They be good, you know, good citizens and they have children and their children will be proud to have you as the grandfather because your child was able to stand there and say, you know, my dad did this for me, did that, you know, we did this, we, whatever, whatever. You know, they say, look, he was just a lump on a log in the living room when he was there. 
Mm. Now what? You know, now you're a grandfather. You're lump on the log again. Doing what? Mm. You're lump now because you don't know how to do anything because you didn't learn anything. Yeah, you know? I got to run out. I'm sorry to cut you off, but you guys keep up this. This is this is good stuff. God bless y'all. And just may this continue to reach the ears and the audience of the people who really need to hear this and may it touch their hearts. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right, y'all. All right. God bless. Okay. Well, so we had to drop in a drive by by Ken. <laughs> yeah. uh, did you want to say something, Will? Or should I go on to the next video? I mean, you know, we we we're doing these shows with uh, best intentions. We want we want the best for you know um, the fathers out there as well as the mothers out there. And like I said, if if you're the type of individual where uh, being in a relationship with somebody is not what you want, then, you know, you may want to gravitate towards not, you know, in, uh, creating another life that is stuck in the middle. Uh, mm -hmm. Because there's, there's a lot of negative stuff on both sides of the fence, but we're focusing on the actual father, you know, uh, responsibility. You know, there's a lot of things in this world. You know, some people are like, well, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I'm dealing with, and this, that, and the other. And and that's true. But there are some people who fit this scenario that we're talking about. The outliers, you know, they're there, and you know, you have to deal with what you have to deal with. But um, you know, if you don't want to engage in having a hostile life, you know, if you if you're a man and you're with a woman that is constantly attacking you or so forth and so on verbally. And, and that's dealing, that's mess with you. Like you got to remember that you put yourself in this situation because you didn't take your life serious. Mm. And now that you're in this situation, you have to live up to those responsibilities as bad as they, as bad as that might sound. It's like, that's why it's important to protect yourself. You protect yourself health, health wise, you protect yourself financially wise, you protect yourself from, you know, uh, having that life that you were not wanting to have mm -hmm. you know and i'm saying your life not the child's life but if you want to if you want to uh practice abstinence that's an option if you want to pra practice using prophylactics <clears throat> that's a, that's an option but you have to own that responsibility you can't say well uh, she tricked me you know well you fell for it you know saying so you put yourself in that position to get tricked you know, I, I mean, that sounds bad, but it's the truth. You know, you have to own up and, and say, you know what, this happened. I, I got to deal with it. Yeah, she's like this, but you know what? Tomorrow's another day. You know, hopefully one of these days she'll just, you know, stop tripping. And But I'm going to make sure that my part is done so that, you know, my child is as good as I can make sure my child's life is. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's fine. And, and, and there's two points here to, to the show. One, you know, just to have conversation and to talk about things, um, learn from each other. But more importantly, is to feel comfortable that you can talk about things. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, you, no one knows everything, you know, and if you did know everything, you'd be a pretty lonely person because you, who could you talk to? Nobody knows enough to talk to you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So there's a couple of reasons why we do the show. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's hard when you don't have a good background in the topic, you know, being a father, uh, but it's not impossible. You know, you still have a responsibility. I ask all the time, why are you here? Why do you think you're here? You know, it's all about you. No, it ain't. They ain't put all this here for you. <laughs> you see, it's for the ones that's coming. You know, that's why we do what we do. You know, we may not articulate it that way, but people work every day for to to manage a life. You know, and if they think it's all about them, fine. What's going to happen when you die? Everything you did is either going to be forgotten or left behind. One of the two. So. Why are you here? You know. but anyway, let's go on to the next one. You know, uh, and this one is focused on how to make yourself how to make yourself a memorable father. 
Let me get this up here now. Five ways to be remembered as a good father. I was driving back home when I received the news I had been dreading. A year and a half prior, my close friend Mike called me to tell me he had cancer. Now I received the message that he was gone, leaving behind a lovely wife and two beautiful daughters. A day after I received the news, I flew out to gather with his friends and family to celebrate his life. The experience of losing someone close makes you evaluate the life you are living. One of the most powerful thoughts that emerged was that this life is a vapor. It moves incredibly fast yet is richly significant. I thought about how I would want to be remembered. There were many people that spoke at Mike's memorial. A theme developed. He had led a powerfully full life that was driven by relationships. Most of all, he adored his wife and daughters who will always remember him as a remarkable person who loved them faithfully. We all want to be remembered that way by our children. I learned a lot from my friend. Here are five ways to be remembered as a good father. Just be. Give yourself daily reminders to be the father you want to be. Well before he was married and had kids, Mike knew what type of husband and father he wanted to be. So he put these two words on his bulletin board. It was a reminder to him daily to be that man. Don't wait. Give yourself daily reminders to be the father you want to be. Listen instead of lecture. Anytime someone spoke with Mike, the focus would inevitably come back to the other person. He wanted to hear what was going on with them. He focused his attention, asked open-ended questions, and spent hours listening to others. In his final moments, the hospital halls were lined with people he had impacted because they felt cared for. Listen to your kids and know what they are feeling and thinking. Be a builder. He was a builder of people and community. He not only encouraged, but came alongside people to help them. It was never you can do it, it was we can do it. Problems were opportunities for people to come together. Let your kids know that you are in it with them. Encourage them and build their confidence. Connect your family together and with others. Be a memory maker. Whether it was fishing, golf, sitting around a fire pit, weekends away, playing, road trips, vacations, and more, Mike was always making memories. He knew there was value in doing things together and he consistently initiated it. Take your kids with you when doing the things you love. Plan activities with them that they will remember and talk about for years. Live each day like it's the full final day. There is a movie called About Time. It's about a father and son who can travel back in time within their own life. The father gives the son the advice of living every day twice. Live it the first time with all of the stress and concerns that tend to blind us of the wonder of each day. Then live it a second time soaking up all of the joyful details we often miss. The son eventually stops doing that, choosing to, as he says, enjoy, each day like it was the full final day of, his, extraordinary, ordinary life, and to relish the remarkable ride. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's not something that probably happens, you know, easily. You know, something, and the first thing that the guy said was that he puts a reminder up, he remind, he reminds himself that this is what he should do because he's looking for a particular result. You know, if it's not natural for you to be that kind of an engaging person to always want people to be around you and be, you know, helpful to other people and be concerned about other people, and you make a note, keep it right on your forehead, yeah. Uh, be nice to people, you know, okay. <laughs> you know, every time you look in the mirror, you say, it says, be nice to people, you know, or whatever, be nice to your kids, whatever you want to do. Um, and people will remember you, you know, I mean, being remembered is about all you got left, you know, because any money you leave behind, they're going to spend it. Any business you leave behind, they're going to ruin it. <laughs> any, any, any property you leave behind, they're going to sell it. So 
All they could do is remember you, you know, what you tried to do for them, what you did for them, how you helped them, how you made them laugh or, or, or whatever it is. You told them funny stories. But, you know, that's about all we got. You know, life continues on, just keeps on rolling. And uh, on the one hand, it's a good thing. On the other hand, it's like, you know, kind of sad, you know. <laughs> it is what it is. So comments. <clears throat> Well, I'll, I'll say this: it's it's only sad if you know that you don't have that. You know, I mean, there's people that they live they're living their life and they're they're enjoying their family, and the, even the thought of being alone is not even uh, there's no inkling of it in their in their in their thoughts and minds. So, uh, <clears throat> but for in the realm of fatherlessness, you know. Um, if you're a father of one or many children and you're not in their life and you know that they, you know that you have these children. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, if you're a guy out there and you don't know that you're a father of, you know, but if you know that you're actually a father of a child or children and to not have a relationship with them, to not know uh, how they think about you, how they feel about you um, as you get on in your years, you know, uh, if you're still not in a committed relationship or there's nobody in your life and you start reflecting on your children, like, man, I got some kids out there. They don't know who I am. I mean, that's where it becomes really sad because you're living in that moment and you're knowing that there's people out there that you could have a connection with, but because of the choices that you made, it's not, it's not an option. You know, uh, and they're not checking for you, just like you're not checking for them. And, you know, that that's where it becomes really sad, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to have that opportunity and to misuse it. Yeah, yeah, it is. And, um, you know, but we're all adults. And I'm not saying but, you know, I'm just saying there is. We're all adults and, you know, people make mistakes. But, you know, um, it takes two people to make a, a child. Mm hmm and you know <sighs> we have to realize what it means you know if the two of you lay down and, and 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 made this baby then the two of you should have had an understanding of what it was going to mean that it was no longer going to be about you two it was going to be about the child you know um but if you didn't get figured that out before you lay down um it's probably gonna be a rough road uh when you get up because you're thinking one thing and they're thinking another thing and uh they may not necessarily be going in the same direction you know it could be whatever and so yeah but we talk about the uh the downside of the, you know of fatherlessness and it's not always an upside you know not everybody you know, have, makes a child and the child falls apart because they weren't in their life. That's not the mm -hmm. case, you know, but more often than not, it becomes a, a problem that they could have avoided, that could have been avoided. Mm -hmm. And everybody stepped up and did what they were supposed to do um, when they did this. Preferably avoid doing it like that <laughs> until you actually ready to, uh, to actually you know, commit to and 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 have a child and raise a child. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, in a, in a way, you know, and uh, you know, as a individual that was once young, you know, uh, you know, you, you wonder, well, why we got to do it that way? You know, that's that old stuff, this thing, the other. Well, that old way of living <laughs> came about because people didn't know what they was doing, and as they learned over time, they put certain things in, in, in uh, set up certain norms to keep things the way that they knew worked. You know what I'm saying? If, if we as young people come up there and say, well, ah, that don't sound good to me, I don't wanna do that. And then we fall on these bad times and, and, and wonder why our lives are so hard. We have to actually take a minute and look back and say, well, so-and-so and so-and-so was telling me not to do it the way I did it. Mm -hmm. But I was hard headed, you know. Yeah. I, I said I knew better, you know, or this didn't work for me, and this will work for me. And 
you know, that's that's that ignorance that we have to get over, you know, like, well, you know, oh, my parents, they're old. They don't they don't know what they're talking about. Well, they're old because they've been around longer and they've seen a lot more. So it would benefit me to learn from what they've learned. You know, if they, if they went through the trials and tribulations and they want to pass that knowledge on to me so I don't go through the trials and tribulations, I'd be a dummy, you know, just a straight dummy not to listen and say, you know what? Well, mom and dad went through this or dad went through this or mom went through this or mom, dad and grandma went through this. And if they would have did this, you know, uh, well, now they tell me if I do this, that I can avoid that. You know, I put myself on a better path. That's that's that knowledge uh, that you can't think that you're better than the people that came before you. You know, now you can put yourself in a better position based off of what you've learned from those people in the past that, that have been here before you. But you don't start life off in a better position than your parents because you're not funding yourself. You're not feeding yourself. You're not clothing yourself. They're the ones doing the hard work. So if you learn what hard work it, it went into creating you and feeding you and taking care of you and, and pro providing you with education and, and a roof over your head and stuff like that, if you learn what it is, then you might say, well, dang, you know, I don't think I'm ready for that. You know what I'm saying? And so maybe I just need to sit here and focus on these books or focus on my career or whatever, you know, because you know what you want to do in your life. If you know that you don't want to be associated with a, a, a certain type of woman and but you're laying down with them and therefore you might or you get them pregnant. You did that to yourself. It's a self-inflicted wound. You know, you have to say, look, if I want better for myself, I need to make better choices. And if you're if you're really into that woman, then you need to have conversations with her to find out where, where her head is at, because you're 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 wanting to be in a committed relationship with this person and you're saying okay we're doing this we're if we have a family you know i need to know if you want to keep the child or if you don't want to keep the child because there's some women out there that may not want to keep the child and the father might want to keep the child you know that's that's a whole different ball of wax there you know yeah. but these are the things that we put ourselves into when we engage in grown up adult activities without having the, pr the prior knowledge or prior uh, conversation because we think it's all good. Like, oh, well, my homeboys is doing it. You know, my cousin's doing it. You know, I, man, it, this is just the thing to do. You yeah. Know, and the price. Yeah. And uh, for those who are not paying attention to what's happening in society here in the U.S., uh, let me just point this out to you. <clears throat> There's a trend now that abortion should be illegal. Not that abortion is uh, the end all, whatever, but yeah, there's some reasons why um, in our society that we understand that this is not gonna work out, you know, particularly if it's going to threaten the mother's life or threaten the child's life, you know. Um, there was a case just the other week where a woman, wanted to get, needed to get, not wanted, needed to get an abortion because the child had some sort of a disease that the skull would not form, you know. Um, and so when she found out about it from the doctors, you know, said, well, the child is not going to have, if they live a week, you know, then, you know, whatever. So maybe we should try to do something about it now. And so she had to leave her state to go. I think she traveled 1,400 miles to another state so she could have it. And they want to give her, um, you know, prosecute her for doing that. And it's like, well, because you, politician or whatever, or you self-righteous people believe that, oh, well, abortion is wrong. You can believe what you want, which is fine, but that's for you. The other person is entitled to free will to do what they want to do. That's what God said. You know, whether they want to sin or not sin, that's between them and God. 
not between you and what you think and them. And so with that said, for those men out there who think that they continue continue to lay down with women and make babies and walk away, trust me, the next wave that comes through here is going to be that if you don't want to take care of your child, you are going to be watching the, what they call those things, the um, bars at the jail. Because society is not going to say, well, you got to have a child. And then if you can't afford it, we're going to support you and let you as the man who made the baby walk around here and not support the child. Well, <clears throat> got a fun fact, well, not so fun, but uh, there are things out there where they're trying to make people, men that are in relationships with women that have children that are not of them uh, responsible for child support because that's how bad it is. If, if you're if you're a male and you have a child with a woman and you are not there, and let's say another guy is there, you know, taking you know taking care of your child or whatever, they may be on the hook for child support because you're not doing what you want to do because society is is pretty much saying, look, they're not going to sit here and keep paying all this money. They're going to put somebody on the hook and it may be somebody that looked like you or somebody related to you or, you know, it may be you, you know, you might be the uh, the guy, you know, that meets a nice lady and you like, well, she has two kids or whatever. And I think she deserves a good man in her life and I want to be with her. And then for whatever reason, it doesn't work out, but because you were there in a paternal type of role, you may be on the hook for child support. So you got to be careful on both sides of the fence. You know, like you just, you got to take, you got to know what's going on. If you don't know what's going on, you know, trying to be a dad that that's not there, you know, is, is a problem. Trying to be, you know, a, a good Samaritan father sometimes can cost you, you know, I'm not saying not to do it, but you need to know what you're, you're getting into, you know what I'm saying? There's, legal ramifications for every decision that us men do, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. There's legal, legal ramifications and you need to know what you're dealing with because things have changed since back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll see how it, 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 it pans out, but it just seems that there is a trend that society is moving towards and these laws, you know, whether they're fair or not. If you keep putting the politicians in there that agree with that thinking, you're gonna keep getting these laws. You know, and I'm not saying laws are, are a bad thing. I'm not saying that, you know. What I am saying is some things, and, and this has been said many times, why are you as a man, politician, standing making decisions for women, you know? I, I, don't, I don't wanna be in that position. Well, but we, we got to kind of get off the political thing because there are some women out there that agree with that, too. So, you know, a lot of a lot of people try to make it seem like it's men against women. And that's disingenuous. There's a lot of women out there that feel that that way, too. And so I don't want to con conflate the situation. If, if you don't want to have a child, then don't practice those practices. You know, uh, if you want to have a child, you practice, you do adult activities. If you don't want to have a child, then you have to be more responsible. Either protect yourself, make sure, sure that you got protection, you know, and then you don't even get to that realm of having to figure out if you're going to abort the baby or not, you know. You or, got to be, you, you got to also keep in mind that uh, rape and incest are problems, you know. Um, here, supposedly in the U.S., you know, there are laws about uh, for pedophiles, you know, other places in the world, age is not a, a factor, you know, why that society accepts that, you know, you got to live in that society to, uh, to get an understanding whether it's acceptable or not. If that's the law or that's the uh, tradition, then you got to figure out what you're going to do. You know, you continue to lay down with, with dogs, you get up with fleas. You know, and you can't complain about the fleas because you laid down with the dog. Uh, but yeah, there's some issues that are out here that, you know, uh, are greater than the individual who's sitting there 
making a decision. And, and your point that there are a lot of women who support that, that kind of one-sided thinking. And the problem is that those women that support it, most of them aren't going to be involved or impacted by this. Their children will probably be impacted about it, but they're not concerned about what, you know, the daughter, what happens to the daughter. They're just concerned about, well, me politically, this is what it should be and so on and so forth. And yeah, well. That's not accurate because a lot of these things are state funded. And when people that have religious beliefs and they don't believe that their funds should be going to something that they don't believe in, that's why you have a lot of this backlash. So you have men and women of all different shapes and sizes and religions that don't want to fund something that somebody could have said, hey, look, you know, let me wear protection. You know, it's that person's right to, if they want to go out there and pay for an abortion themselves, it's their right to. Well, see, yeah, and that was the point I was going to make. They're not, it's, it's not limited to um, publicly funded abortions. They yeah. said abortion, period. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, you already have a group of people who don't want to be associated with that religiously. So they're always going to be, nope, 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 I don't agree with that. You know what I'm saying? If you're not going to take the responsibility to protect yourself, why do I need to financially cover that? So if you already have somebody that's already on that side of the fence, you're never going to get them to see what you're saying because they don't agree with destroying a life. No, I, I, I understand that people are not always going to agree. But what I'm saying is, is that it, right now, the process doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, if you want to narrow the, the statement that, you know, this public money is not going to be allowed or available to someone who wants an abortion. Okay, that's one thought. Public money is not going to be available to someone who was raped and gets pregnant. That's a whole different kind of conversation. Public money is not going to be available to someone who was uh, molested by their uh, relative or an adult person or something like that. There, another conversation. You know, you can't just put a blanket over this and say, "Well, this is going to solve the problem." That's just plain ignorant. Okay, and if it don't, when it hits your door then you'll finally be saying something else other than, oh, well, the law says so-and-so. And, you know, you want to live within the law. But that's people. And we, in this society, that's uh, managed by the majority, supposedly, and the majority is always a, a different conversation because, you know, those who voted, those who didn't vote, you know, type of a thing. Uh, but I think there's just some things you can instruct people that these are the consequences of these types of actions, you know, and let's start there and then let's work within that framework. Now, just come out and make a blanket decision that, oh, why are you frustrated? You know, is it coming out of your personal pocket? So why are you sitting there and, you know, because here in Georgia, we got Kemp, you know, complete moron. Uh, and his, his boy Rothenberger, or Rosh, whatever you want to call him, you know, two idiots, you know, ain't, ain't, can't make chick no child. And they're sitting there trying to make decisions on people who, whatever, we, we, we in charge. Yeah. I disagree because uh, there's a reason why you left New York and came to Georgia. Georgia is clearly doing way better than other states out there. So we can't just sit there and say that these guys are morons because we don't agree with them politically. Georgia's doing, Georgia's is what you, is what way better than what? There's a reason why you left New York, right? I left New York because we bought a house here in Georgia. Yeah, because New York is what? It's hard to live there. It's way expensive. There, the crime rate is out of control. You know, I mean, there, there's reasons why people are leaving California, New York, and all these liberal states. So we can't just sit here and say that people are morons when people are clearly leaving other democrat brand states to come to georgia and they're living their best lives here in georgia <laughs> just saying you know oh, we gotta think about that uh, uh, <laughs> i'm just gonna leave that alone i'm just gonna leave it alone um but in the, in, in the meantime 
and in between time. You know, um, we have done what we needed to do today. We've talked about the issues of fatherhood, uh, what type of a, the five different kinds of fathers there are out there. Which one do you want to be? We gave you the tool to sit back and say, well, there's the list of the different types of fathers there are. Which one do I want to be? And what it means to my family, my children. And we gave them the tool about um, how to become a memorable father on the good side, not the bad side. <laughs> yeah, so I think we, we, we've done what we could do with it. And so here's your opportunity to make your statement. Yes. Uh, at this time, we would like to extend the opportunity for our viewers to uh, recommend topics for us to uh, discuss in the future. Uh, if you want to do that, hit us up in the comment section. Or if you'd like to be a panelist on the show, please hit us up in the comment section as well. We look forward to hearing from you. Yes. And like we always say, we'll see you again next week, God willing. And the creek don't rise. And the creek don't rise.